Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in the Word. It is the second week of December. We're here with chapter two in the book of Philippians. And I'm curious how it went last week. Did you find something, one of those tasks that you don't love to do, and did you find joy in it? Um, I'm hoping that you did, because this week in chapter two, our application again is focused on uh, doing everything without grumbling. Um, are disputing, doing things readily and cheerfully, um, no bickering. And so um, I think if you were doing this as tied to chapter one, kind of that looking inside yourself and going, okay, if I'm doing this, you'll notice on the devotional handout that this specifically calls out using this scripture to correct and train your children in the same way. And so I think if we are applying this individually last week and talking about this individually, this week we as parents, or even, I mean, everybody has kids in their lives in some capacity, right? Even yeah. if you're not their parent or um, just affecting those around you. Instead of just saying like, stop this, stop this, don't do this, don't do this, to really bring it to the heart of what Paul is saying in this. Um, and so memorize this verse and remind them hey, I think we're going to do this without bickering. We're going to do this cheerfully because this is how God calls us to react. Yeah. I have a friend who she always says, like, when you're correcting your children to bring why or why do we do this back to the scripture and to always use the scripture because it says it's powerful for training and correcting and teaching and rebuking. And so it's just a good reminder for me as a parent always to think about that, like, instead of just saying what you should do because the word of God says this. And my kids can't complain or fight against the word of God. They can say, I don't want to have to do that, mom. But if I say, but the word of God says this, like this is, it's powerful. And so to use this at, and to use it for ourselves, like sometimes I can have a complaining heart or an attitude of, I don't have to do this right now. Um, but when I have that scripture like in my heart, it's good even for myself to correct and train myself and be like, but I'm gonna do things without correct, without complaining or without arguing. And I'm gonna do this with a joyful spirit like we talked about last week because I'm doing it unto him and I'm doing this for him. It's not just because it has to get done. So. And it's a sacrifice. I mean, we're putting off our selfish desires and our wants and our comfort in order to do that to glorify him. So yeah. speaking of sacrifice. Yeah, this is actually, so I'm gonna do our memory verse first because it goes into the heart of the thing. So it, we're in Philippians two, verse three. It says, do nothing from selfish, selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Um, and in that being our memory verse and in reflecting on the season that we're in of what Christ did for us, that he, he decided and chose to serve us by coming down from heaven, being born as a baby, being born into poverty, being born into hunger and into um, a world where he'd experienced pain, where he'd experienced all the things that we've experienced. Um, but then he chose that in humility to serve us and to love us in that way. And so we're reflecting on that, we're reflecting on you know, before he chose this, what was life for him? It was in heaven with the Father, face to face with the Father. And he chose to put off his life and to choose to embrace the humility of being a servant and the humility of being having to be a baby and having to have people have to meet his needs. Um, so just to, to do that and to reflect on, because he did that, what does that mean for me? And how can I embrace humility and how can I embrace doing things I don't necessarily want to have to do? It just keeps coming back around like to his example, but to do them in joy because I'm doing them out of love and I'm doing them out of serving and I'm doing them for the joy of what Christ has before me. Yeah, the humility that he showed in, in taking that on, there just really is this like glaring absence of resentment, I think. You know, how often we do things grumbling and maybe we'll we'll do the thing, we'll do the yeah. task or whatever and we'll carry it out. But then deep down, if you're honest with yourself, am I, am I resenting that person because I'm having to do this for them? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that was just not present when Jesus was serving. It wasn't, well, I'll do this, but 
Yeah. You know, it just really was. That's that's how I, I think about this is that he did things with the absolute like absence of any resentment yeah. toward those who either treated him unfairly or were just the recipients of his servant or his servant. Yeah. It's just like that piece of that scripture that says for the joy set before him. Like he did, he embraced this with joy for what he saw in us and what he saw before him. Um, and then we're just praying. We're praying through Philippians 2, 9 through 11. And I know people, um, scholars believe that this is like that while he was writing that Paul went into this portion of a song that was a known song in that time. But it's so powerful. It just talks about, you know, that at the, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. And so I think it's a really great way to pray that. So many times we pray and we've been taught to pray by being thankful and addressing God for who he is and then bringing our needs before him and this. But instead this week to just pray declaring in a way. So we take that same scripture and just instead of reading it, like I might read it and be like, that at your name, Jesus, every knee is going to bow. And I just thank you that every tongue is going to confess and realizing the power of our words in just agreeing with his word and speaking it forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, we are praying for you and walking this along with you this week as you focus on doing things about grumbling and complaining with a humble spirit like Christ did. And we will see you back here next week for chapter three.